The good news is that it is possible to assign a class dynamically to an element, and that would then affect the output based on the selection of that dynamic field. To give an idea of what I mean, I'm going to change the color of the fourth post to red, and the way that I'm going to do that is head over into the editing post page, admin area, select here class 2, which is a custom field. We'll update the post, head over to the website, refresh the page, and now you'll see that the fourth post is in red. If I want to change that to green, head over to edit the post and change that to class number three. If class number three is selected, then I know that the output will be in the green. Let's just uh, try that again with the post updated. So there we have the, the green output. If I want to change it back to the gray, head back to the edit, change that to class one, update. We just wait for the post to update. Write post updated, refresh, and now you'll see that that selection has changed. So basically what we're doing then is we're using the custom field to determine the output or the class values to use. And how do we do that? It's relatively uh, simple, or easy to do. And if I was to right click on an element, you'll see exactly how that works. So to achieve the custom um, class output or dynamic class output, you'll see that we've used a attribute on the post title, which is data dash class. So as long as the attribute starts with data dash, you can call it whatever you like. In this case, we've said data dash class and that is equal to and i've just gone with class one class two class three you can put whatever information you want between those inverted commas how do we then assign the class now to that data uh, that dynamic data i'm going to head over here to customize on the left hand side to show you the style what the css looks like so if we then head over here to the css you'll see that what I've done then is using the square brackets, we have data dash class equals and then inverted commas class three. I did the same for class two and the same for class one. So that's how we match up the attribute to the CSS class. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do you assign that attribute now when you're designing the website? So to show you how to do that in Bricks Builder, I'm going to head over here into Bricks Builder and here I have my list of posts and what I've done here is just using a section with a standard container. In that container I've assigned a query loop and the query loop is just the default query loop. I haven't made any changes to the query and I simply dropped in a post title. Now how do we assign the attribute to the title? If I go over now to style and we head over here to attributes, under attributes you'll see that I've added this attribute data dash class. So to show you how to do that, it's relatively easy. I'm going to just add a new attribute here. I know that I've called mine data dash class. As I said, after the dash, you can pretty much call it whatever you want. So I've assigned data dash class is the attribute name and then it asks for the value. And the value then, I've created this in advanced custom fields, just in the free version. So I simply scroll down till I get to advanced custom fields. I know that I've called it um, post class. So I'm just going to scroll down through my advanced custom fields. So let's have a look here. There we have post class. So I select that then from my acf list of custom fields and that's all that i need to do inside bricks builder save that and now if we go and have a look at that on the front end so if i refresh now and we have a look at that post you'll see now that it has that data dash class associated to that particular title so now if i right click inspect Let's just make this a little bit wider here. So you'll see here that we have in that H1 selection then for the post title, data dash class equals, and then it's picking up the custom field from the post. The custom field that I created, so if I go into the field groups, 
here I have my custom field. So I'm going to have a look here for the um, post class. So here is the post class post group that I created. And if we open that up, you'll see that I've just gone with a standard post class. And it's a radio button. The reason for the radio button is so that you only select one class at a time. Of course, if you wanted to allow more than one class to be selected, you can change that to maybe a tick box. So there we have the radio button, and then it was the field label of post class, and then the choices class one, two, and three. So once you've created your classes or the names of these selections, then just remember that you would then need to create the class, and then that class would automatically be assigned based on the data class selection. Uh, what we can do now is we're going to have a look at doing a, another example. And what we're going to do in this one is add a second field class. And what we'll do is we'll maybe just do a background. So what I'm going to do is head over here. And where I have the post class, you'll see I'm going to add a new field. And in this case, I'll once again make it a, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it a, select again and I'll make it a radio button again and this time I'm going to call it background so the field label will be let's make it post background and then the field name will be post background and then the choices let's go with and we can make the choice anything we want but let's just make it the colors black uh, gray and green right so there we have the um, backgrounds created and we'll save the changes now what we can do is now we can go and have a look and see how we can create that dynamic interaction now where we assign two classes to the same element so in the previous example you'll see that when we selected the um, value we just had the acf underscore post class in this case what we're going to do is look at including the post background so i'm going to head over to um, bricks. I'm going to just put in a space. Then I'm going to go back to select dynamic data. And I know it's going to be post background. So I'll just type in post. And ah, now the reason it's not showing is because we actually need to refresh bricks to include those changes that we made to the custom field. So let's just do that quickly. So we'll refresh bricks. Now there are two ways of doing it. In the one the one way of doing it is to head over to the post title over to style attributes and data post class so we could go uh, with a space and then do a search and i know that it's going to be post underscore background and we can do it like that or we could simply just have typed it in so there we've selected both elements and i'm going to save so now the um, output is going to require an exact match. So if we do it this way, it requires an exact match. And what we mean by that is if I refresh now, let's have a look at what we have in the data output. So when you output in the data output now, you'll see that it needs the exact match in the styles. And if we look at the data class here, you'll see that it is outputting uh, the class equal, is data class equal to class one. But the problem is, is that it also needs to include the second class. So it needs to be an exact match. So if I wanted to do an exact match for this particular post, uh, let's just refresh. I would have to make sure that the class that I create is going to be exactly as it is. So class one and black. And over here, I'd have to come into additional information and I would have to go class one. And black. Right. So I would have to create that exact class. So what I'll do now is create the exact class. And I'm going to create the background of black. Right, so 
with that done, let's publish. So, uh, and also need to include black. Right, so now we have data class is equal to class one black. And let's just publish that. And over here on the right hand side now, you'll see that we have the data output. So if we inspect that, you'll see that it just says class two or class one. If I go back to my custom fields, I'm going to set the default value here to black. And we'll save the changes. Head over to the website. Let's refresh. And now you'll see that we have the black background. And if I inspect, you will see that the data class is equal to class one and black. So you need to set that default value in your custom fields in order to make sure that that value is applied to all the existing posts. If you don't, of course, then it won't be applied. So there we have it applied. The disadvantage of doing it this way is that I need to create now this matrix of classes and each of them based on the fact that it is class one black, class one um, green for all those colors that we had. So I'd have to do a black, gray, and a green for for the class one, class two, and class three. So here, for example, class one, black, gray, green, I'd have to create a class. For class two, black, gray, green, create a class. Class three, black, gray, green. So the easier way of doing that is to create a second attribute then. And the second attribute we'll just call background. And to do that then, here where we have the data class, I'm going to remove the reference to the background. So we'll just um, take that out. Then I'm going to add a new attribute. And that attribute now is going to be data dash um, background. And what I'll do then is just paste in that ACF post background reference. So now we're going to have two data classes. So we'll have, we'll have two data attributes, data dash class and data dash background. And then we can save. Now when it comes to our CSS, it's going to be a lot easier. And in this case, then let's just refresh the page here. So nothing changes here because all we've done is change the attribute. So we now know we have a black, gray, and a green. And if I go and have a look at the posts now and I refresh, you'll see now that the posts now have a reference to the data class and then also now to the data background. So we're just waiting for that to load up. And the advantage now is that instead of having to create this matrix of classes, I'm just going to create a second class. So there we have the data dash background. Now what I can do is instead of having this matrix of classes, including everything, I can just go data dash. And we see now, just to make sure that it's the same, we know that it's background. So data dash background. And in this case now, I can create the black background. And then I can create the green. And then similarly, I can create the gray. And what I'm going to do then is just change the color here to green. And we'll just go with um, uh, gray. So just some default colors. And then we'll publish that. Right. So now what I can do is head over into my post. And I'm just going to refresh the editing page. And then we'll make some changes. So in this case, this particular post has the black background. Let's change that to green. Head over, change to green, update. As soon as that's updated, head over to the website, refresh. And now you'll see that the background of that post is now green. 
So with that loaded. Right, so there we have the um, the change then to that particular post background. So this is how you can assign dynamic values to your posts and then based on the dynamic value create um, different styles then based on those values. So that's how easy it is then uh, to include. In this case I've just added it to the post listing, some post titles. Of course you could create far more complex arguments or functions that output uh, different values and then assign them to classes or classes to those values and that would then change the output and it can all be managed dynamically. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Thank you for watching.